Mario Party 10 finally hits every territory outside of Japan tomorrow, so I thought it would be fitting to prepare you all with the many games I thought were the most fun to play over the course of my Mario Party 10 parties. When deciding how to pick my favorite Mario Party 10 minigames, I realized that there are many different types of games. There's the regular minigames you'll see throughout the boards, but then there's also the mini bosses, bosses, Bowser games, etc. I'm gonna limit this top 10 to games that you'll get regularly throughout the party, but there's three mini awards for my favorite games from those categories. Best Mini Boss? Mega Cheap Chomp Shell Shock. This game seems so simple, but it leads to some serious mind games. You get three shots per round, and each hit will turn the Cheap Chomp a quarter turn. You want to get as many hits in as you can, but if you shoot too early, you'll run out of ammo and be caught dead when he attacks at the end of each round. But if you wait too long, you might not get all your shots in. When in Rage Mode, small Cheap Cheaps block your shots, forcing you to multitask between your ammo, getting a clean hit, and how to make sure that the Cheap Chomp won't womp you. Best end stage boss? By far, without a doubt, is Bowser's Tank Terror. You pilot mini tanks in a final duel against Bowser's Mega Tank, dodging various obstacles while trying to get in as many hits as you can. Mushrooms on the field make your tank and damage more respectable, but they make you bigger and easier to hit during his attacks. Get halfway through the fight and... Oh god. I'm having flashbacks. Bowser, no! I didn't mean for it to end like this! Had I known we would have caused you so much pain, I would have never- Oh, JK, he mad. Form 2 is more the same with even more deadly attack patterns to dodge. It's intense, and the entire game itself lasts like three minutes. Minigame? Nah, that's a mega game. It just wouldn't be fair to include these types of games with the normal ones. And our final award goes to the best Bowser game. For picking my favorite, I decided to go not with the most overpowered Bowser game, but the one I had the most fun with, Bowser's Pain Ball. The Bowser player controls the gamepad as if it were a mini pinball table, using the triggers as flippers, and even having the ability to tilt the gamepad to momentarily stun your targets. There are a few games out there where you can rack up more damage than this one, but as a pinball lover, this one was my clear-cut favorite. Alright, many awards out of the way, let's start up this top 10. Number 10. Shy Guy Shuffle. This is your typical shell game, where you'll have to guess which Shy Guy is carrying the most donuts. Only the first guesser can claim a single Shy Guy, so following at least two of the best options is usually your best strategy. They get a little tricky, especially in rounds two and three, but the real reward here is at the end scene, where the crew takes a break from eternal rage in order to sit back, relax, and eat some donuts. I love how Rosalina's all, oh dear, I must not leave any crumbs. Meanwhile, Waluigi is double dunking it, and DK's just eating them whole. It's adorable. Number nine. Soccer Brawl. Here we've got bumper balls, except now you're using the bumper balls to bump this ball into the goal. The physics are hilarious, making this game fun to jump into, but a very difficult one to master. For a long while, I was good for nothing. Nothing but throwing my own ball into the net trying to save it. But after time, I got the hang of it. As goofy as it is, Soccer Brawl, or probably Football Brawl if you get this game outside of the States, is a ton of fun. Number 8. Boo Burglars. An interesting team game where you just might end up helping your opponent more than yourself. Teams are split with one net and one light, and they're tasked with grabbing as many diamonds as they can hidden inside of the boos, which only show up when lit. But the twist is that you can steal diamonds from the boos lit up by your opponent as well. The pro play is only having a boo lit when you have a teammate close, but in practice it's pretty crazy. Also, these are computers. They can't comprehend their complex human brain strategies, so Rosalina's the best teammate I've ever had even though she's on the other team. Number seven. Snake Block Party. Ah, oh, the beloved Snake Block. Introduced in Super Mario World, this winding enigma has always been a favorite of mine in Mario's platformer stages. You never quite know where the thing is going, but you have to constantly adjust to the changing platform. Now add four people into the mix and multiple snake blocks, and that's a block party. You want to stay at the front in order to finish the race in first when you get to the goal, but then you'll have less time to predict and could possibly fall, putting you in bubble mode and giving someone else a shot at the glory. You might have to pogo off an opponent for, well, the entire stage. As expected from Mario Parties, there are plenty of solid platformer challenges, but this one was my favorite of the bunch. Number 6. Bouncy Brawl. You know how I've always hated how Bumper Balls has almost always ended in a draw with competent players? Bouncy Brawl is bumper balls, but with a big fix. You can actively control how much knockback your hits have by jamming on the 2 button. 
but with great power comes great responsibility. If you spin a little too hard, you'll spin out in a drunken stupor, open to be destroyed by the slightest tap. Number 5 Cheap Cheap Leap there are so many instances in Mario and even Mario Party where dodging countless waves of cheap cheaps is your main goal. But not today. The exact opposite, in fact. Everyone starts this battle with a star on, and the most cheap cheaps pulverized wins. Small are worth one point, large are worth two, and the golden ones are worth three. Dividing your time finding the most points, all while fighting in close quarters for horizontal and vertical positioning, is insanity. These games are often down to the wire, coming down to a few Goldens that decided to hide within the masses. But as a hater of cheap cheaps, this is the perfect release. Now who's the cheap one? Number 4 Fruit of the Doom Aside from likely being the brand name of Bowser's Underpants, Fruit of the Doom is an awesome game of collecting and dodging. Grab the fruits, but avoid the urchins. It's tough, at the front is all that sweet fruit, but if you get hit, you'll throw some of your collected fruit backwards. So, do you charge the front, or scurry like a rat to pick up the drop fruit of others? Fruit salad, yummy yummy. Fruit salad, yummy yummy. Number 3 Babam Combo. This is one of the most entertaining minigames in Mario Party 10, and quite possibly the most fun to watch. Your goal is to fire a Babam into his field of friends, searching for the largest chain explosion that you can find. There's certainly a high level of chance in this game with every bob -omb randomly running around, but trying to optimize your position for a huge combo is seriously, pun intended, a blast. Just don't be this guy. Oh god, Donkey Kong, why? After all these years, we let you back into Mario Party for this? He said it very hard difficulty too, that's the second best one. It hurts every time I watch it. I've gotta go. Number two. Move-In Mushrooms In Move-In Mushrooms, the setting is a giant sort of pachinko machine, where three players control one individual platform, while the one player moves three at the same time. Your goal is to drop as many mushrooms as you can into your team's colored zone, which moves across the bottom at varying speed. On top of that, you've got the usual gold-colored three-point objects, and purple shrooms that can subtract your score. It's chaotic, but it can definitely be mastered. You can balance shrooms for a long period in order to hold off until the area has a better position, or you can do a hard flick on the controller to launch shrooms off, either as a pass to another player or a quick way to get rid of some poison. This is by far one of the most balanced 1v3 games that I've played so far, always down to the wire, and always one of my favorite minigames of this version. Number 1! Bob Sled Battle Instead of competing for speed, you're in a race for the maximum amount of coins. Butting heads at the opponent for the largest purse at high speeds is already a great concept, with a super satisfying clank every time two cars meet. But what really sells me on this game are the bombs, which show up about halfway through. There is nothing more pleasing than shoving the opponent into an explosive because they were too greedy for a coin pile. If you get blown up, you'll lose coins and give the entire field to your opponent for a good amount of time. You can come back from this, but man, it's really hard. Mario Party is all about high stakes, high tension, and dissolving friendships. With hits like this, you'll be on your way to no friends in no time. You don't need any friends. That's what the amiibo are for. Thanks for watching today's top 10. If you want to see the top 10 of my favorite Mario Party 1 minigames, you can check that one out right here. Also, if you want to check out our live stream for Mario Party, you can find them over at twitch.tv slash thejwits every Monday. I'll see you all next time with more Nintendo content.